Everyone knows about Batman's sacred law against the use of guns, a law that stood the test of time, but what of the test of friendship? Well, if you've ever doubted just how hell-bent Bruce is against the use of guns, then it would probably surprise you to know that he once butted heads with Simon Baz, aka Green Lantern, over his particular interest in carrying a loaded gun. Like, why would a lantern even need a gun anyway? Well, in any case, he had one, and Batman didn't like that one bit. So what does Bruce do? Let him keep one to make sure their little alliance continues, make another enemy, actually get into a fight with a lantern. Wouldn't you like to know? Well, good. Kick up your feet and flip through some comic book pages with us. In Gotham City, the Diamond District, I've never seen William like this. I'm afraid. Philip, a Gotham citizen, on the phone with the cops as his friend trashed the place, yelling some cryptic nonsense. You don't understand! None of us is safe from him! William yelled out with a baseball bat in hand. Philip, the only way to protect you is to kill you. I kill us both if that's what it takes. Looks like Arkham Asylum might be having a new inmate here. Right as things were escalating, though, a huge explosion blew William away. Sir, what was that noise? The Gotham police asked, still on the phone with Philip. Sir, is it the police? Out of absolutely nowhere comes the Dark Knight leaping right into the building. It is definitely not the police. Guess someone's been eavesdropping. Well, Batman's presence didn't do much in terms of calming William down. If anything, it just made him a lot jumpier. Well, this probably shouldn't be much of a shocker. It is vengeance we're talking about. No, it's him, it's Batman, stay away from me, William yelled with more fear in his eyes. Could Batman be the man William has gone mad with fear over? While Bruce was already at the scene, two lanterns flew across Gotham as fast as possible, trying also to make it to the scene. Yep, Dark Knight had backup on the way. Backup that William knew nothing about as he attacked Gotham's Cape Crusader with a baseball bat. Get away from me, William yelled as he hammered into Batman with his bat. I don't want to hurt you. Batman was kind of struggling with stopping crazy William without having to hurt him. And that's when the Lanterns, Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz, make their pretty sweet entrance, bursting right in, flying over Batman and heading for William. Green Lanterns, welcome to Gotham. Well, for starters, not many people are familiar with these names, but they've been around for some time now, and not to mention they can hold their own against serious threats. Explains why Batman called them. Well, as they dropped in, they immediately double-teamed William, taking him on from different angles without really causing him much harm. Batman! I have to kill the bat, William, as he took on both lanterns while Bruce observed from afar. Before William could spew any more nonsense or harm anyone else, Simon encloses him in some green beam from the ring. And that wraps up William's story, but there seems to be more to the Batman spook episode. I've only got a few hours. Bane is on his way to Gotham and I've sent my alleys away, but we've got an ongoing situation. You two have the qualifications to make a difference. This is Commissioner Garden. Batman talking to Simon and Jessica right before Gordon briefs them all on the idling hellstorm brewing in Gotham. There's a wave of crimes we can't account for. Cases we've started calling crimes of fear. Normal people suddenly seized by terror, driven to irrational violent acts. No warning, no explanations. Over a dozen of these crimes, every single one is different from the last. Completely random locations, no pattern any of them, and there's still one final kicker. They are all afraid of me, Bruce revealed. And then Simon actually does some thinking. Everyone committing crimes of fear. Hmm. We all know who this sounds like, right? That's right, Scarecrow. A name that Simon brought up. A name that was probably Batman and Commissioner Gordon's first bet. I mean, come on, it's Batman, who is literally called the world's greatest detective. Probably for a reason. Batman then gave a pretty detailed reason why it, however, can't be Scarecrow. The Scarecrow delivers his fear via a medium, liquid, gas, germs. No traces of anything like that have been found. No devices. The Scarecrow is one man. He can't be in 12 places at once. See? World's greatest detective for a reason. Well, after displacing Simon's little ill-thought theory, he gave one of his own. One that pretty much answers why he brought the lanterns all the way to Gotham in the first place. I believe we are facing the yellow rings we saw during the blackest night. This is the work of the Sinestro Corps. Batman makes another shocking revelation. Now, we all know the yellow lanterns, right? Which explains why Bruce thinks it's them, and he's often not wrong about these things. 
But the Lanterns felt otherwise. Uh, yeah, well, it's probably not the Sinestro Corps. Our rings would have said something. Jessica, with yeah, pretty solid reasoning, actually. Even Simon went on a rant about how Batman was wrong, but the Caped Crusader was pretty adamant it was Sinestro. Well, just as that was happening, Simon felt threatened by Bruce and began reaching for his handgun. Yep, a lantern carries a gun. Probably the most distinctive feature about Simon Baz. Gordon was the first to notice Simon's little carry-on. Never mind that. Green Lantern, what's up with the gun? Gordon asked, surprised. The gun is my backup, he replied. Not unless it comes with an open carry license from the Gotham City Registrar. If you want my help, the gun comes too, Simon replied as cocky as ever. Well, until Batman actually gets involved, telling Simon exactly what Gordon has been trying to get into his head the entire time. Not in Gotham. And what followed wasn't pretty at all. This gun might save my life, Simon started. I seriously doubt it. You've got a power ring. You don't need a gun, Batman replied. Everyone needs a plan B, right? Aren't you, mister, be prepared? This gun is my Robin. Okay, that was actually a good one. Both men went at it for quite some time, with Simon stating that a gun is more reliable than a power ring, which is dumb, but according to the Lantern, he'd been in a bunch of situations where his ring failed, and he didn't want to feel unprotected ever again. This, however, still didn't change Bruce's stance against the gun. They were in each other's faces, literally, until Jessica showed them a video off a laptop showcasing Batman as some big threat that the people needed to snuff out. What is this ugly-ass video? Simon asks Jessica, looking at the laptop while Batman just stared in his direction. Yeah, these bad Batman videos are literally popular right now. I've seen a bunch of them. But there was more to these Batman videos. They weren't just ugly. Simon and Jessica's power rings were the first to pick up on this. Upon watching the video, the power rings began beaming and actually sent out an alert. Alert! Aberrations detected in the emotional spectrum. Classification, yellow light. Emotion, fear. Identification, unknown. Signal type, unknown. Source, computer, the rings alerted. And that's when it finally dawned on all of them that the Dark Knight was... <gasps> freaking right the whole time. Yellow light, fear, but that's... Sinestro Core, Simon said in shock, cutting his partner off. Let's move, Batman said with a sense of fulfillment as you'd expect. So they went to the one place where they could get a lot of answers, the Batcave. And the obvious shock on both Lantern's faces meant one thing, they'd never been here before. They were kind of like kids at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, while Bruce got straight to work on his computer. But they were all about to be met with the biggest shocker of the night. Maybe if you were more like the Flash, maybe if you didn't try to scare people so much, they wouldn't have been so ready to be afraid of you. Jessica said to Batman as they all stared at the Dark Knight's computer screen, unknowingly to them that fear had already made its way down the Batcave. Out of absolutely nowhere, Simon's power ring goes. Aberration detected, and in the emotional spectrum. Then Alfred straight up whacks a cup of coffee over Simon's head and absolutely rocks his knight with a KO-worthy punch that sends his gun hand flying out of its holster. One part of Simon wanted to show Alfred why he shouldn't mess with lanterns, but then Bruce isn't going to be happy with that, is he? So he was reluctant to use his ring. Alfred goes in for another punch before looking down and picking up Simon's firearm. Not much of a backup now, is it? Alfred! Batman yells out. No one move, Alfred says as he moves closer to Simon before putting the gun to his skull. If your ring so much as glitters, I'll pull the trigger. Simon had so much fear in his eyes, while Alfred had rage in his as they lit up bright yellow. Don't try to stop me. I have to kill the bat. But something good was about to come from Simon getting his ass handed to him by Alfred. His power ring began scanning Alfred's emotional aberrations and tracking it to the inner parts of Gotham. Well, this all has the Sinestro Corpse written all over it, but what would they have against Batman? The power ring scanned the yellow light to an industrial complex somewhere in Gotham where civilians are all seated in front of the computers and forced to watch the bad Batman video over and over again, turning their paranoia into crippling fear and rage. And at the head of it all is, in fact, Scarecrow. But not just a regular fear toxin Scarecrow, a Scarecrow with the power of the yellow ring. So Simon was kind of right too. Who would have thought? Well, back in the Batcave, a certain lantern still had a gun pointed at his dome. If I see as much as an emerald glimmer from either ring, I will pull the trigger. I have to kill the bat, Alfred says, even with more anger and death in his eyes. So something has to be done. Look at him. It's the video signal. It hypnotized him. 
Alfred, Batman called out as he moved in on him. Get back now or I'll... Before he could even finish, Bruce swooped in and grabbed him from behind. No, the Bat Monster! Alfred in so much fear. Then Batman straight up cradles him and recites him a poem. Listen to me. Be thine own place, or the world's thy jail. Whatever the hell that was, it worked like a peach. In no time, Alfred slowly regained consciousness. Jessica Cruz was a bit curious about whatever had just happened. Uh, be thine what? John Don poem, Jessica. Precautionary post-hypnotic trigger phrase to break him free of the mind control. I didn't know it would work this time, Bruce answered. <laughs> Always prepared with everything indeed. Well, with Alfred totally and miraculously fine, Simon then moved in for his handgun, which was pretty much just lying on the ground. But unlike before, Simon showed a bit more reluctance. He'd just witnessed his backup be used as more than a backup. As he picked up the gun, Batman just looked at him without saying anything, and that was probably worse than if he'd said something. Apparently, there were more pressing issues. The bad Batman videos don't just spread propaganda. They're encoded with Sinestro Corp's energy frequency, detected by your rings. The videos go viral. Only a handful of people go mad with terror. Why? Batman asked, still itching to put an end to this mystery. Bruce, in his infinite wisdom, figured out that not all the videos on the internet have been spiked with Sinestro's fear energy. And Batman being Batman, he was able to find the fake proxy address where the spiked videos were served. Put that on a freaking map and track down the Scarecrow's lair. Now it was time to put an end to this once and for all. And as much as I'd totally love to keep this going, we're going to have to take a rain check here. Yes, your moans and groans are audible, but what's a classic comic book story without a good old-fashioned cliffhanger? There's still a lot to uncover here, guys. Do you think Simon will actually give up his gun? Seeing how badly he was messed up in the Batcave, that's pretty likely, right? Or will Bruce ease up on the gun laws? Just how far will Scarecrow take his newfound fear powers? Get the answers to these questions and more in our next video. We'll see you then.